Um, good afternoon, everybody, and I want to say happy thank holy Thanksgiving. Today we're celebrating Thanksgiving because I, I have two Thanksgivings in my family. I have my general family, like my mom and my dad and my sisters, and then I go over to my grandmas and everybody in my family. We get together almost every holiday, and yeah, so I was just helping my mom cook, so that's why I'm a mess, okay? And I wanted to make this video yesterday, because I finished, it's about this book, and I finished it yesterday at school, but as soon as I got home, it was perfect. My mom was sleeping, everyone was out of the house, because my, my mom was sleeping because she had work. So... I was about to make this video and then I took off my uniform and put something else on because I don't want you to know what my school is and all that jazz. And then I found out that Google Chrome wasn't working because I use I webcam it. That's what I'm doing right now. And it wouldn't keep on going. It just said connecting and it wouldn't happen. So I'll try today after all this. This is my fifth time trying to film this. Because my sister and my mother kept on asking me for help when I thought we were done. The, everything's clicking now, so I'm just waiting. So in my spare time, why not do this since I couldn't do it yesterday? So I'll start with this. This is a review about the um, plain truth. I keep on wanting to say the plain truth, but it's just plain truth by Judy Picoult. If I'm saying that way. Not, I'm sorry, Jordy. And this is a picture of her. Okay. And this book is um 400 and see exactly 405 pages long. And this one has the reader's guide in it, which I never look at. But in case you were wondering. This was a very unique book, I think. Well, and it's in the WSP Reading Club. Which, why there's a guide in it, because it's a reading club guide, I guess. Anyway. But it's about this girl named Katie Fisher, whose baby died in the barn after she gave birth to it and all this, and she has to go to court. I'll just tell you. The gist. In the beginning, it talks about this person that we don't know who it is yet, but it's Katie Fisher. And it talks about how she's having a baby in the barn. She wakes up and it, because she has contractions. She goes and to the barn and she has a baby. And she cuts the umbilical cord with um, shears, like scissors. And then she wraps, ties the umbilical cord up with your arm um, twine that was near it. So she found all this stuff in the barn and then she covered all the blood and stuff with hay and she held the baby and let it root her finger in his mouth so he could root this boy, by the way. And then she falls asleep. When she wakes up, she has no idea where the baby is. And she's Amish, by the way, so she thinks that since she was praying for God to let the baby go away to make everything back to the way it was that God answered her prayers and we all know Amish dairy farm okay and then um the next morning the people who come in to milk the, the cows come in and they're cleaning up the manure and stuff on the floor and then one of the guys moves the horse blankets and finds a dead baby all purple and stuff and then the police get involved and they close up the crime scene and all this and everyone comes and invest um an, an investigator and all this and the investigator talks to everybody and no one on the barn um in the town had was pregnant or is still pregnant or that they knew was pregnant. Okay. And Katie's special um Katie's special boyfriend, Amish boyfriend, she's Amish too, came in 
and um to see Katie and was like, oh my God, did you hear the news? And she was cooking, so she had no idea what they were, what was happening. And he goes, there was a dead baby found in the barn. And she started being like crazy and was like, I need to see this baby. If you love me, you will let me see this baby. And he lets her go see the baby and she starts crying and having a fit. And then the investigator sees this and Katie runs out onto the porch and she follows her and she's like, did you have a baby? And she didn't admit to it. She goes, no, I did not have this baby. And then blood was like trickling down her legs. So she went to the hospital and the doctors said, yes, this person had a baby recently and all this because when you have a baby, you need to go to the hospital and get fixed up. And she goes to court right after the hospital. Like, she's in the hospital and the like, police come in and we're like, you have to go to court. So she goes to court and nobody would, like, stick up for her. But she has an aunt who was banished from the community because she married someone that was not Amish. She was she went there to the court and as she was there, her cousin came to her house which is a lawyer to relax. And so, yeah, she came in and was like, I will I will defend her. And the judge was like, how are you going to watch her? She's a mortal or she has to stay in jail. And Ellie, which is the girl's name, the lawyer, was like, I'll watch her. So um, Ellie has to watch her now at her house, which is Amish. She's Amish. And Ellie's not Amish. So yes, she has to go to this farm and stay with these people who are Amish that she barely knows for until the trial starts, which is like six months. And it talks about how she starts becoming friends with um, Katie and all this stuff, and about she's trying to figure out what happened to this baby because Katie says she wasn't pregnant, she didn't give birth, and all that jazz. But everybody says she did. Her blood was everywhere. They found uh, the nightgown under her bed that she gave birth in that was bloody. And the baby had the same blood as her. And her shoe size was and that was in the mud where the baby was was gone um, on there. And they took her shoes and all this. So Kate, Ellie has to live with Katie. And she, she try to save her. They start becoming friends, and when it's time for the trial, Ellie wants to make her win the case by saying she's insane. And if you don't know the Amish, this book tells you a lot about the Amish. Like, they, if they were accused of something, a sin they did or something, they just accept it, and then they get punished for it, and then you know, after they're shunned for a couple of weeks or months or days, they'll be welcomed back to the community. So she thinks that she needs to be tried in all of this. Yeah, and so they also found out that the baby didn't die, that the baby, she didn't kill the baby. She, everyone thinks she did, but she, she thinks she does, doesn't, neither does Ellie, and then they found out that the baby has had this infection that you get from unpasteurized milk, which she's on a dairy farm, she eats milk, just plain old milk, without any, like, chemicals to, like, make it sanitary and stuff, so she, the baby got an infection, and they think the baby died because of that, and that suffocated or killed just because she, they had an infection, which led to respiratory problems and illness and yeah. Yeah, sorry, I'm taking a long time about this stuff. So and then Katie found out that this happened and she goes, Oh my god, I killed the baby. She tells Ellie, I killed the baby and Ellie thinks she killed him like suffocated him. She later finds out that she meant that she killed it because it's her fault she gave the drank the milk to the baby, died of an infection because of her. And in the end, this is a spoiler, so if you don't want to know the end of the book, 
don't watch this any further. In the end, she, um, since the court couldn't make a decision, it was like five days, she came to agreement with the other the people who were against her and said, okay, if I put on house arrest for a uh, year, it'll be fine. And they agreed to that. She's on house arrest. And Ellie also, in here, it's um, a lot about Katie's life and a lot about Ellie's life. And Ellie it gets pregnant in the middle and Katie helps her through her struggles through that. And yeah, and then at the end, she get, um she starts packing up because she lived with them, but the case is over. So she starts packing up and Katie's mother comes in and and hence, um, Ellie, the scissors to cut the, that cut the baby's cord, and the uh, trine that held the baby fast, she, like, tied off the cord. Oh my goodness. Couldn't think of a word. And at point, it, she basically told her, I killed my grandson to keep my son, to keep my daughter because she lost two other kids, which is in here, and two other kids, um, her daughter, other daughter named Hannah, which was the youngest, died at the lake river thing, over the creek, I don't know, because she was ice skating on it, and she fell through, and Katie blames herself because she was there, and yada yada yada, so she's dead now, which Katie sometimes even sees her. In one scene, even Ellie sees her. So, yeah. Sorry if you hear my board. He's loud. Oh, my goodness. And Josh, I think her name, his name is Josh. I'm not too sure. It's, I'm starting to read another, like, I read this book a day ago or so. You may see, like, oh, my God, you forgot his name. But he's, to me, is not one of the important parts of the story. Josh, I think his name is Josh for sure. Well, anyway, he goes to school, so she, he is banished from the community, which is a big pop because he goes to school and Ellie, um, Katie visits him, and that's how she gets pregnant because she falls in love with his roommate, and they have sex for the first time, and that's the baby's dad. And her boyfriend, Katie's boyfriend, the Amish one, is so shocked that he is not the father, and he's so, like, upset about it because he loves Katie. Well, anyway, uh, the mother lost those kids, and so she she handed Katie all that stuff and was like, not Katie, Ellie, and she was like, I killed my grandson, blah, 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 basically what she said. And Ellie was like, oh, my God, what should I do? What should I do? Should I, I need to call the court, and she has to go on trial for this murder. But then she hugs her and she realizes she can't do it. And then she walks out into the ward, whole ward, like electric and stuff like that. And yeah, that's it. That's the end. But it's a good book. I, ex I like learning about different faiths and stuff like Amish people and all this. And it was good, but some parts bored me to the point where I had to force myself to read like the more most of the trial stuff that was like talked about the procedures you go through a trial that's not interesting to me so yeah in all I give this probably a four out of five so yeah definitely a book to read I liked it but I like Amish People. If you don't like to learn about Amish things, don't. Amish people and stuff, don't read this. Back to Jordy Coy. I also have two other books that I have of her 19 Minutes and My Sister's People. And I'm reading this right now, which I've seen the movie. And so I'm not very far. I'm like, wait, here. Yeah, I just started reading it. It's good so far. Yesterday, I didn't know what book to start out with. And I was going to ask you a whole bunch of questions about which book I should choose because I have a whole bunch. But I couldn't get on the I couldn't make a video. So, yeah, I'll probably do that when I finish my sister's people. Well, it was nice talking to you, and I hope to make another video soon. Have a Thanksgiving, and bye.